A lot of you f***ers are focused on how do I make 10k a month? 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 Very few of you guys are focused on how do I become the best in my skill, in my industry, in my business. If you guys can get your clients amazing results, you'll never have to worry about getting clients. If you can help your clients get clients, you don't have to worry about clients. You know, one of the things that most people don't know about me, I hit 10k a month within like 30 days of launching my agency. This is zero. And this is everything you need to build right here the whole foundation that you need to create to get to hundred thousand dollars per month so i'm going to talk about what needs to happen below the water for you to be able to climb up this iceberg and get to a hundred thousand per month smma heaven today we want to talk about the smma iceberg so here's what everyone sees right you go on the internet you see all these people hitting 10k a month oh my god this teenager hit 10k a month oh another person in joel's program hit 100k a month what needs to happen here for you guys to be able to hit 10k a month 100k a month first things first guys one of the biggest fallacies in in entrepreneurship I've already talked about this. I'm going to say it again. You need time in the game. So a lot of the gurus out there are going to tell you, hit 10K a month in 30 days or watch how fast I hit it. You look at people like Iman, who's younger. You're like, oh my God, he hit this much per month at such a young age, but you don't realize he's actually been at it for like five years. For example, when I started my first ad I ever ran, I, I ran an ad for my parents' wedding venue and I was 18. So I did Google ads for them at 18. Then after I went to college, I started my first business failed second business software company failed graduated at like 22 and i went and got a job for two years working in sales and marketing then at 24 i started my agency so by the time i started my agency i literally already had six years doing some sort of business thing whether it was learning google ads whether it was working for two years in sales and marketing it takes time by 26 i make my first million dollars by i think like 29 around there first 10 million maybe it was 28 and then now by 31 over a uh, 30 million so keep in mind when i got this job right here at 22 years old i was making thirty-eight thousand dollars a year at 22 i was making thirty-eight thousand dollars a year so like 3200 dollars per month which is wild but you could see how fast it compounds and that being said most people will give up literally right here. Those first four years of me trying business, learning things, that's where most people will give up because they won't even get started. They'll watch a bunch of YouTube videos. You guys will consume my course and never do anything with it and never take any action. Maybe you take action for like a month and you're like, cold email doesn't work. SMMA doesn't work. Eh. You guys need to stick in the game for longer. Time in the game. Are there some people that got very lucky? Absolutely. Here's the problem. You guys are looking at all the successful people, even young people, and you don't realize that either there's some element of luck involved or they actually did put a lot of time in. So for example, Jared Curry hit 100K a month as a teenager, but he had been doing business for like four years in high school and learning and drop shipping. And he started in two SMMAs before he had his first hundred thousand dollar SMA. So keep in mind that you see the success and you don't see how much time they actually have in the game before they achieve that success. So that's one thing. Here's another thing. A lot of you f are focused on how do I make 10k a month? 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 Very few of you guys are focused on how do I become the best in my skill, in my industry, in my business. And the problem is that you're thinking the wrong things which are leading you to the wrong answers. So for example, you can ask yourself, how do I make a million dollars working as hard as humanly possible? Or you can ask yourself, how do I make a million dollars and have it be mostly automated? And you're gonna get two completely different answers. So the, the kinds of questions that we ask ourselves will lead to the quality of answers that we're looking for. You want a higher quality answer, ask a better question. And a better question for you guys to ask yourselves is not, how do I make 10K a month? How do I get to 100K a month? It's how do I become the best? in SMMA, in sales, in marketing, in ads, in content, whatever it is you're doing regarding SMMA, let's say you have a roofing agency. Ask yourself, how do I become the best roofing marketer on the planet. Solving that problem will get you to 10K a month faster than you could ever imagine. You know, one of the things that most people don't know about me, I hit 10K a month within like 30 days of launching my agency, okay? Maybe it was like 60 days, so don't freak out. But 10K a month in like two months.
Now keep in mind, it came crashing down pretty quick. We were back at like 3K a month, literally within like 30 days after that because we lost a bunch of clients, we didn't do things right. That being said, we scaled fast because I already had a lot of the skills. I had already become a pretty decent marketer. I had been working in marketing since I was 18. I ran my first Google ad at 18. By the time I started my agency at 24, I had been learning about marketing for six years. Now, if I was the absolute best, imagine if I was Mr. Beast and I started an SMMA, I'm probably gonna build a million dollar agency overnight. Think about that. If I'm Mr. Beast and I launch a content agency and I post a video about it, I'm probably gonna have tens of millions of dollars worth of contracts lined up with a waiting. Why is that? It's because he became the best at what he does and therefore he became someone worthy of that money. And then the money is just a byproduct. Here's what happens. Most of you guys are thinking, how do I get 10K month? How do I get 10K month? How do I get to 10K month? How do I get to 100K month? How do I get to 100K month? And slowly you become the best. But imagine if you just actually optimized for this. How do I become the best at SMMA based on what I'm doing? If it's content, how do I become the best at content? Lyndon over here, this guy. I was like, Lyndon, if you want to make even more money, you have to ask yourself, how do I become the best at YouTube on the planet for entrepreneurs? And then even further, how do I become the best content creator for entrepreneurs on the planet? If you can solve that, then you will never have to worry about clients. Here's the secret. If you guys can get your clients amazing results, you'll never have to worry about getting clients. If you can help your clients get clients, you don't have to worry about clients. Again, I'm going to say it one more time. If you can help your clients get clients, then you don't have to worry about clients. How do you get to the point where you're helping your clients get clients you become the best at what you do you run a content agency go out and become the best content creator you run an ad agency go and become the best copywriter and media buyer that's how you can get to 10k month or 100k month very very quickly and obviously it takes time like i said time in the game and there's a lot of ways that you can become the best you can go and work at an agency you can pay for mentorship you can take a step back and learn and just practice on your own and just scale little by little if you really had big balls you could literally go and get a job driving doordash or uber eats take all that money and reinvest it in, into some roofing ads for a fake roofing company and i promise you if you have the balls to do that you're gonna learn how to run roofing ads so quickly and be the best because you're putting your own money on the line so the key is become the best at what you do put time in the game here's a really important one i'm gonna just say it stop being a bit you have to stop being a bit. And at the beginning, I know that's pretty aggressive, but at the beginning, you have all these fears, you have all this doubt, you have all these insecurities, and so did I. Like, first time I ever did public speaking, I had a panic attack, and I was deathly afraid of public speaking for like two years after that. First time I ever did a cold call, I remember cold called a doctor. He was so angry that he actually pulled, he was driving, he pulled to the side of the road to scream at me. My heart was pounding. So I've been there, I know what it's like, and you have to kill your inner every single doubt every single insecurity every single fear you have to attack it like your life depends on it now you're probably wondering how do you attack your inner bitch? how do you kill your inner bitch? you have to do the things that you're afraid of doing you're afraid of public speaking guess what go and do public speaking you're afraid of cold calling guess what go and do cold calling you're afraid of getting your clients bad results get your clients bad results deal with that situation take ownership and then very quickly figure out how to never be in that situation ever again. That's how you get really good. So all the things that are holding you back mentally, you have to attack with full force. This is probably out of all the things that I can give you in terms of what you need to have mentally to get 10K a month, 100K a month. This is probably one of the biggest ones. When I was here, 18, starting a business, even here, when I was at my job, I was, I was so afraid of quitting. It's like, oh my God, it's not gonna work out. What if this happens? Even when I was running my agency, I almost quit three times at some point I even started applying for jobs again I've shared the email with you guys before of me applying for jobs and even getting rejected there's a lot of fear when you're starting a business maybe it's pressure from your parents maybe it's pressure from society maybe it's pressure on yourself maybe it's your fear of getting rejected maybe it's the fact that you want to be loved and now that you're doing business you're going to get told no a lot of the times maybe you're a nice guy and you need to learn how to be a savage and it makes you really uncomfortable maybe you're not good at setting boundaries with yourself and you say yes to everyone and you need to learn to say no to get to the next level all of these things you're going to have to fight all of your inner demons all of your fears all of insecurities all of your doubt needs to be killed 
And the only way to do it is to first get clear on what is the thing that I'm afraid of? What is the thing that's holding me back? And then you just have to do it. You actually have to do the thing that scares you the most. For example, if someone's afraid of flying, I used to get anxiety on airplanes. You know what I tell people if they're afraid of flying? And it's the same thing I tell myself. Get on the plane and do it a lot. And guess what? If you do it every single day and you keep hopping on the plane, you start to get comfortable with the uncomfortable and eventually it stops being uncomfortable. And it's just a new normal. This will allow you to kill your current identity and create the space to create a new one. This is why some of the best performance coaches on the planet tell their athletes to create an alter ego. They literally say, hey, when you're like, for example, Beyonce, that's not her real name. Beyonce was created so that when she's on stage, I know that's a weird ass example. It's just the first one that came to mind. When she's on stage, she is Beyonce and it gives her the confidence to go out and perform in front of tens of thousands of people. So you need to stop being a bitch so that you have the mental space to actually create a new identity, a new normal, a new standard. So number four, guys, I've coached thousands of you guys. Like I said, I've helped over a hundred people scale to a seven figure run rate. I've helped multiple people scale to the eight figure mark. And I've seen this over and over again, belief. Most of you guys don't have belief on a few things. Number one, and most importantly, belief in yourselves. You're not actually confident in yourself. You're not thinking to yourself, I'm gonna make this happen no matter what. I asked Lyndon today, you guys saw him already. Yo, Lyndon, how would you feel if you lost everything? He said, I'd be fine. It's because he has belief in himself. If I asked you guys, what would happen if you lost everything? You'd probably be scared. If I lost everything, would it suck? Absolutely. Would it be uncomfortable? Absolutely. Would it be really hard? Absolutely. But I would be confident in my ability to go out and make money again. So the question is, how do you create more belief in yourself? Which by the way, translates to belief in your company, which translates to more sales. You know, people say, oh, you need conviction on sales. You need conviction on sales. What do you actually need more than anything is the salesperson to have conviction in themselves? Because if they don't believe in themselves, then how are they going to convey that confidence through your product, through the service? This is why Andy Elliott, by the way, he's a pretty intense guy, but this is why Andy Elliott loves to get all of his sales teams shredded, looking really good, feeling really good so that they have belief. He said, you know what? I didn't close this deal, but I'm still a savage. That's belief. So what are some things that you could do to create belief? My number one favorite piece of advice for people that don't have belief in themselves is to focus on two things. Number one, the big three, sleep, workout, nutrition, which really leads to discipline. If you can nail a basic diet, a consistent workout every single day and get good sleep so that you're ready to go, that already is going to prime your body for success. You're gonna have energy to be able to go out and take action. If you feel like shit and you can't even nail this, then how are you gonna even be able to take sales calls with energy, with confidence? This is why a lot of successful people also take care of their bodies. Now, are there exceptions to the rule? Of course, just like anything in life. There's a reason why Jeff Bezos is jacked as f And there's a reason why a lot of successful people are in really good shape. It's because it starts with how you feel in your own skin and your own body. Before we get into the tactics, before we get into that, all the rest, it starts with you. If you can't even say, I'm gonna sleep seven hours so I have enough energy, not eat like sh and work out, if you can't even do that, you're not gonna be a successful entrepreneur or it's very unlikely. Again, there's exceptions to the rule, but most people are in decent shape. And no, you're not Elon Musk trying to get people to Mars. We're talking about most of you guys trying to make 10K a month, 100K a month. He's literally out of shape because he manages three or four or five massive companies solving some of the biggest problems in the world and trying to put a chip in your brain without getting sued by the government when that shit explodes. And uh, he has a big issue on his hand. He literally just had a Tesla robot attack an employee at the factory. So he doesn't have time to go to the gym. You guys do. So take care of yourselves, feel good about yourselves. And that way, when you get on the sales call, at least you're rested. At least this thing is working and you're not slow. So this first, and then here's my next hack. Anything that you say you're gonna do, you have to follow through. You have to be the kind of person that says they're gonna do something and does it. If you consistently say, I'm going to do this, and you follow through, then what happens is you start to trust yourself. What does trust lead to? Confidence. You can rely on yourself. For example, if a friend tells you, I'm gonna be there at 4 p.m., I'm gonna be there at 4 p.m., I'm gonna be there at 4 p.m., let's say you guys are meeting at a coffee shop at the gym, it doesn't matter, and they continue to lie and drop the ball and they're not there. Next time they tell you, hey, I'm gonna be there at 4 p.m., do you believe them? You're gonna be like, no, dude, I don't believe you. You're not gonna be there. 
Whereas if they're always there, you wouldn't even have to ask them. You'll know that they're going to be there. You trust that person. You guys need to say, you're, every time you say you're going to start your agency, but you don't, what happens is you lose belief in yourself. Every single time you say you're not going to switch niches and you switch your niche for the seventh time, you lose belief in yourself. You become the type of person that says they're going to do something, but doesn't. Every single time you say you're going to cold call or send your first Instagram DM and you delay, you start to lose trust because you can't rely on yourself and therefore you won't have confidence. And when you finally have a sales call, you're going to be scared shitless, and your voice is going to crack. If you can't get this right, like forget about everything else. Like I'm just saying, don't be a lazy fat piece of like, that's all I'm saying. Get the basics down. Take care of yourself. If you can't get that right, you're going to like, I don't know what to say. So get the basics down and then consistently say you're going to do something and follow through. Belief doesn't happen overnight. You don't become best friends with someone the first time you meet them. It takes consistent effort of showing up and continuing to have that person's back and being there. And slowly but surely you build trust and you can rely on them. That belief doesn't happen right away. It's almost like you're building a relationship with yourself, but you continue to let yourself down. Well, then you're not gonna believe in yourself. That's like, I can go into the, into more specifics, but that's literally the 80, 20. And then this is something I've never talked about. I wanna talk about it. Don't die. That's the last one I'm gonna talk about. Most of you f what happens is you get a thousand dollars and you blow it. You literally, Armand, I love you, bro. You're, you're freaking amazing, but you've made 20K a month like five times and then you've lost it over and over and over and over and over again. You keep dying. It's not a video game where you could just continue to show right back up. It makes it very hard for you to go. It's almost like you're going here, 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 back into the water. And then now it takes all this energy. Now you're swimming in the water. You're out of energy. Ah, woo. Then you're back out of the water finally. You're starting to climb up, climb up, climb up, boom, back down. I'm not saying literally die. I'm saying metaphorically in business, don't die. Most of you guys at the beginning need to be more practical. If you literally have zero dollars, go and get a job. Go work at like literally Uber Eats, DoorDash, save up at least a few hundred dollars so you can eat. Save up a few hundred dollars so you can pay for a VA, pay for backup uh, Instagram accounts so that you can send out more DMs. You guys are playing business on hard mode. At the beginning, time and money is against you. You have very little time and very little money. You're playing it on hard mode. That's why people say, oh, the bigger you get, the easier it gets. The reason why is because you're playing it on easier mode. If you have $10 million in the bank account, you could literally put it into a Chase savings account and make $500,000 per year off of your savings account. Guys, if you have, let me say that again. If you have $10 million a year, you can be in the top 1% of high income earners in America right now in 2024 without doing anything. Just by holding $10 million in a savings account in your bank, make 5%, 500,000. Why? It's because it's easier to make money when you have resources, time and money. Those are the two resources, right? Obviously there's more, you could say connections, all that good stuff, brand. But for the most part, the two biggest resources that you guys are fighting against are really they're fighting you and they're, it's, it's almost like gravity. They keep pushing you down is you don't have enough time and you don't have enough money. So at the beginning, be a little more practical. Armand, I'm talking to you. You guys know Armand, he was on my YouTube channel. He kept scaling, crashing, and I told him, you gotta stop crashing. We, we really came up with a good game plan. He's finally has a really good plan to scale up. And by the way, I love you, bro. You're a great guy. If you keep going back down, it makes it very, 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 very hard to play the game. Again, it gets easier the higher up you go. So if you keep falling back down, you go right back to very hard mode. So what I want you guys to do is be more practical. If you don't have any money, try to save up $1,000 that you never touch. If you literally have no money. Go and work. You can, anyone can go get a job or maybe not anyone because there's exceptions, but most of you guys can go out and get a job and save up a thousand bucks. Most of you guys could even go get a job and save up 5,000 bucks and say, you know what? I'm never going to touch this. That makes it easier to play the game. That means that unless you at some point have to tap into that 5,000, you'll never die. That's why whenever I start a new business, I'll invest like 50 to hundred thousand dollars in. But as soon as the business is profitable and pays back that initial loan, I make the business fund itself. I get my principal back. I will never lose that 50 to 100K. It's kind of like when you go and gamble, you make your money back. And then anything after that is pure profit. 
you're playing with a house's money. That's the idea. That's what I want you guys to think about. You don't have time or money. So ask yourself, how can I be more practical? Maybe it's your first business and you're like, I just want to own 100% of it. But like you're at a nine to five, maybe you should get a business partner. So for example, in my first business, I wanted to have the luxury of a nine to five and a business. So I said to Marcos, my ex-business partner, yo, let's team up. I'll give you and you'll give me half the business. So we'll both make less if this succeeds. However, we'll get more time back. So you guys need to play it on, try to play the game on easy mode and don't die. Stop losing everything. You guys make a little bit of progress and boom, back to zero. I'm all for taking risks. I'm all for you guys reinvesting in yourselves and I'm all for you guys being a little bit more practical. That's the takeaway. I'm not saying don't go for it. I'm not saying don't go all in. I'm not saying don't invest in yourself. I'm not saying don't go and hire people or pay for ads. All I'm saying is don't die. <laughs> Be a little bit practical, save up some money and play the agency game on easier mode. If that means you have to go and work at an agency or become a high ticket closer for a year or two to get some experience on someone else's dime, then go and do that. If that means working for free for someone like Lyndon and learning content from him as his editor where you're editing for him for free, but now you learn the skills, you build the belief, you figure out how to become the best in the game. It gives you more time. You can, well, you won't save up a lot of money because you'll be working for free, but you'll get all the other things. And then hopefully you also do some DoorDash or Uber Eats and therefore you don't die. There's a lot more guys. These are some of the ones that came to mind. I'm trying to really improvise these for you guys and just speak from the heart here. Be more raw, be more authentic. But I really believe if you guys put more time in the game, you ask yourself, how do I become the best in my niche or in my, you know, in the industry, in my service, you stop being a bitch, you start to build belief in yourselves and you don't die, your chances of getting the 10K a month and then eventually 100K a month go way, way up. I'll give you guys a quick story. Christian John, great guy. He started a real estate agency. Couldn't get it to work. Couldn't get it to work. Couldn't get it to work. Failed. He's really good at operations. Now he started an operations agency and it's taking off like crazy. Now he's not at 100 came up, but he is making a lot of money. So he failed at SMMA the first time, but he became a more valuable person. He became the best at his niche his operations and now he's put in time in the game and built all of this in place and has the potential to go out and make way more money so even if it's one of the hardest things you guys will ever do it's also one of the things that is the most worth it